We enter the story in 1985, overshadowed by the Brighton bomb in 1984. This was when the IRA attempted to assassinate the entire British cabinet. between the United Kingdom and the Republic of Ireland to help solve the troubles in Northern Ireland. The treaty gave the Irish government an advisory role in Northern Ireland's government while confirming that there would be no change in the constitutional position of Northern Ireland unless a majority of its people agree to join the Republic of Ireland. It also sets out conditions for the establishment of a devolved consensus government in the region. The agreement was signed on 15th November 1985 at Hillsborough Castle by the British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher and the Irish Prime Minister Great Fitzgerald. The agreement failed to bring an immediate end to political violence in Northern Ireland. Neither did it reconcile with the two communities. A devolved ship power sharing government envisaged by the, by the agreement would not become a reality for many years, and then in a quite different form. However, it did improve cooperation between the British and Irish governments, which was key to the creation of the Good Friday Agreement 12 years later. As such, it can be seen as a major stepping stone in the peace process, of which the intergovernmental component was crucial. was a fairly calm period for Irish history overall. However, on August 7th, Peter Robertson, deputy leader of the Democratic Unionist Party, was arrested and charged with illegal assembly after a mob 
trying to take over a village. Nineteen eighty seven was much more politically unstable than nineteen eighty six. Uh, a general election of February the 19th returned a Fianna Fáil minority government with their leader as Prime Minister. On May the 8th, the SAS killed eight IRA members at a civilian ambush at Lockham. On November the 11th, Remembrance Day, civilians were killed in an explosion. slightly unstable and violent year of 87 continued through into 1988. On March the 6th, the SAS killed three unarmed members of the IRA in Gibraltar. On March the 16th, three men are killed and 70 were wounded in the gun and grenade attack, attack on mourners in Milltown Cemetery during the funerals of three IRA members. On June the 15th, the IRA killed six British soldiers in a bomb attack in Lisbon. However, there was a breakthrough for Ireland, as on November the 16th, Minister for Finance, Ray McSharry, was appointed Ireland's new European Commission Commissioner. <laughs> is when things began to get politically very dangerous. On February the 12th, Belfast solicitor Pat Fenucci is shot dead by loyalists. In June 29th, Charles Hawhey resigns as Prime Minister of Ireland, but he remains on as a caretaker capacity. And on August the 19th, 10,000 people marched from Dublin city centre to the British Embassy, calling for British withdrawal from Northern Ireland. Things were definitely hotting up. On January the 1st, the Northern Ireland Fair Employment Act became law. On April the 3rd, there was an all-party support for the government bill to abolish the death penalty for capital murder and replace it with lengthy prison sentences. On July 24th, the IRA killed three policemen and then down in the bomb attack near Armagh. On October the 24th, three months later, the IRA killed six soldiers and a civilian in a bomb attack at Derry and Newry. On November the 9th, Mary Robinson was elected the seventh president of Ireland. progress in 1990, but the IRA interference continued through to 1991. In January the 6th, the Irish government and the uh, EC Commission met in Dublin to officially launch the Irish EC Presidency. On February the 7th, the IRA fires mortar bombs at 10 Downing Street in London. On uh, November the 13th, Jim McDade, the new Defence Minister, resigns following criticism from the opposition over his attendance at an IRA funeral. was mainly concerned with appeasing the IRA. On January the 20th, Peter Brook offered to resign as Secretary of State for Northern Ireland, following criticism of his singing on the Late Late Show only hours after an IRA bombing explodes. 
Fe on February 4th, Mary Robinson becomes the first president of Ireland to visit Belfast. Like, oh, yeah. 